guys, saying the word professional makes you sound very important, but you quickly realize that that's not really the case. No one ever really sat me down and told me exactly what you do as a professional musician. So I kind of like made it up in my head. I thought that if you're a professional musician, you practice all day, every day. But then there was also another part of me that was thinking, well, if you're a professional musician, then you will already know how to play everything. So you don't have to practice. You just magically know how to play everything. Someone pushes your play music button and then you're like some walking human iTunes or something. You could just spit out anything that people want you to play. I thought that being a professional musician was just sparkles and rainbows and dancing in the moonlight. I thought that the music peasant of the world would worship your feet, not worship at your feet. They would worship your feet. They're like those little pedicure fish that like gnaw on your feet and you wouldn't even notice them. I went to my graduation for both my bachelor's and my master's, but in terms of really feeling like I graduated into becoming a professional musician, I have actually never felt that. And I've never heard of anyone ever saying that they reached that one point where they like leveled up into professional musician. It was more of a gradual realization. Even now, I actually still have trouble calling myself a professional musician. I do think it has to do with my imposter syndrome. I never had the schedule that I thought I would have. A lot of people think that professional musicians practice every day, all the time. But the thing is, you actually can't. Most professional musicians also teach. You end up texting your students or your students' parents a lot. You end up emailing back and forth. A lot of your time is actually taken up by scheduling and the fact that each lesson is at least half an hour to one hour long. So say you have three or four students in one day, that is three to four hours of your day completely gone. And on top of that, you still need to eat, you still need to cook, you still need to do your own chores around the house, you need to pay your bills. Dealing with gigs also is not just like the hour or two that you're playing in the gig. It also requires a hell of a lot of scheduling. For example, like when I did the collaboration with David Eric Ramos, I'll put a little card there for you guys. When we made those two videos, we actually had two meetings for it and each meeting lasted way longer than an hour. A lot of the product that you see a musician put out there's a lot more time that was spent producing that thing that happened behind the scenes that you just don't know about. Most professional musicians don't actually have their own managers. Honestly, we can't afford it. We're already in debt because of our instruments. When you do end up having time to practice, you end up doing what I like to call procrastination. It's when you are procrastinating, but you are trying to tell yourself that you are practicing. So in my case, I will figure out themes from film soundtracks and video games and stuff like that. I will use that as my tone warm up. Sometimes if it's a difficult lick, I might actually use it as like a technique warm up. And then I end up warming up the entire time that I had allotted myself to practice. And then I don't end up practicing what I'm supposed to be practicing. I do know I have a couple of professional musicians watching this channel. Don't lie to me. You also procrastinate. I just wanted to tell the rest of you guys who are not professionals yet that those of us who are professionals are really just like you. We've just been doing this a lot longer, that's all. The human mind gets used to everything. It's kind of like how people in their own towns never visit the beautiful places that are in their towns. I think the entire time that I lived in Vancouver, I never went to Whistler and I never went to the Capilano Bridge. It was like the last week that I was living in Vancouver, I finally went to Stanley Park. In the same way, when you become a professional musician, everything you do becomes really normal. So playing in an orchestra actually becomes really normal. For me, even making videos becomes really normal. Practicing 
is a very normal thing. There's nothing sparkly or rainbowy or moonlighty about it. It actually feels really mundane. For me personally, oh, just a sec. Guys, literally just now, what you just heard, Flute Center of New York flutes just came in the mail. Oh yes! So anyway, you can be doing the most amazing job in the world and you will get used to it. It will start to feel boring. Personally, there have been enough things in my life that have happened that are borderline traumatic <laughs> that I actually appreciate the boring life. It means that nothing crazy in a bad way is happening to me. You will get used to being a musician. It's gonna feel really normal and that's okay. You have to remember that that's okay, even if you don't feel it. The music that you play when you become a professional also does not stop being difficult. Granted, yes, a lot of it is a lot easier because one, you did it while you were in school, or two, you know a lot more music theory, you know a lot more music history. So when you see a new piece of music, but you can recognize the theoretical concepts behind it, you can recognize the historical context, it's actually very easy for you to pull off how it's supposed to sound. But the thing is, composers in the 21st century, if they know the range of the current modern metal flute. They don't actually care about the fingerings. Mm. They will do things like make you trill a low B to a low C. Stuff like that that they don't actually know is kind of impossible. This low B trill was actually written into some music that my friend Paul and I were playing when we were in school together. We didn't tell anyone we were gonna do this, but when we got to the low B trill, I put down my flute because I was his second flutist and then I like reached over and I wiggled his B key for him while he was holding a low C. Everyone just broke down and could not keep playing because they saw what we were doing. <laughs> Composers in the 21st century, they will push your limits. Dr. Bob pushed my limits with Rebirth. Stuff does not get easier. It gets harder. It's just that now you know how to practice. You have more musical knowledge and you are more able to apply that musical knowledge. Like you're more used to it. Again, it's normal. But at the same time, that feeling of like, wow, this is hard. Am I going to get this right by the time I need to perform it? When I was in school, I thought that that feeling would go away when I became a professional musician. But I realize now that no, that feeling never goes away. And it's okay, right? Because it means that you are a human being. It means that you can still grow. It means that you can still learn, which of course means that life can still get more interesting for you, even when you feel like it's boring. With regards to the play music button that everyone on earth seems to think that musicians have, even if they request something and you can do it by ear, there's always that feeling that you don't know if you can pull it off. There's always a bit, little bit of anxiety there. And if you are like me and you started out not knowing how to improvise and you're very classically trained, it feels bad to say, no, I can't play that because I am not good enough to do it by ear. Now I realize I am actually good enough to do things by ear, but I think that's just because I've taken so many ear training courses. So what I ended up doing was because I would take forever during my own procrastination sessions to figure out themes from like Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter and Narnia and stuff like that, I was able to bust out a few select tunes for people. So I wouldn't let them choose. I would say, no, well, I can play this instead. So in that way, I was able to trick people into thinking that I had a play music button. I would say for most professional musicians, we do not actually feel like we have a play music button. We can be tired. We can just not feel like it. Just because you're a professional musician, it doesn't mean that you owe anyone a musical performance unless you personally want to give that performance. When you are a music student and you're not at the professional level yet, you kind of see the professionals as sort of this small group of people that you are trying to be a part of, right? But once you get there, you realize it's huge. There are lots of people, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people on this earth who can play at the same level as you. So really, you're still normal. There's still nothing special about you. Yes, I do understand that that is very depressing to think about. And I was starting to realize this when I, graduated from my bachelor's. So I ended up taking a lot of my professors out for coffee or meeting them in their offices and asking them, I'm graduating now, so 
what do I do? I'm realizing now that there are so many other people out there who are at the same level as me and better. Without talking to each other, all of them gave me the same answer. They said, just be you, just be nice. That's it. It took me a while, but I realized that what they meant was no one can be exactly like you. You can't be like anyone else. In that regard, you are actually special. You inherently will work better with certain personality types than others. Your personality is actually what dictates how your professional career goes. Once you start seeing your career from that perspective, that's when you start to realize that it's not actually about how well you play your instrument. It's about what you make of yourself. Your career actually has surprisingly very little to do with the instrument, aside from the fact that it is an extension of your body. The thing that makes you special is already inside of you before you ever touch the instrument in the first place. Now that is a topic for a whole nother video. So I thought I would split this video into two parts. Next week, I will talk about this whole idea of finding your identity with regards to music. I don't think I've ever made a video with an actual cliffhanger, but I figured that this video would go way too long if I did both topics in one. So stay tuned for that. As usual, if you guys like this video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up and hit subscribe for new videos every Saturday. My last video is over there. And if you want to catch me during the week, my social media networks are down there. But otherwise, I will see you guys next week. Bye. I do know that one of you commented and said that I should check the white balance. I did that for the last couple of videos. Yes, it's a little bit on the yellow side, but all of my lights are actually a little bit yellow and I actually kind of like how soft it makes everything look. Tell me if you guys really hate it. If you guys really hate it, then I'll change it back and I'll white balance it again. Let me just make sure that this thing is actually my arm is not actually long enough, so I actually have to use this pen. It's a Microsoft pen that my boyfriend gave me. Since I am talking about this pen, which you guys might have seen me kind of wave around in one of my previous videos, my boyfriend does work for Microsoft, so there you go.